What's up guys, my name is Devin Nguyen. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. Today we'll be going over how to do this rotoscope whip slide effect, I guess you could call it. It's a popular effect that's going around common in music videos, TikTok edits, uh, velocity edits, video game edits, etc. It's very easy to, to create. We'll be using Premiere Pro and After Effects today. But before we get started, please make sure you like the video and subscribe down below. It's free, uh, all this information is free, so it would really mean a lot if you guys could. But without further ado, let's Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, guys, now that we are finally in After Effects, let's go ahead and first open a new composition, of course. Hit new composition. We're going to just name this. Uh, oh, I can do emojis in that. Yeah. Roto slide test. So now that we have our project composition loaded in, what we're going to do is we're going to go grab our footage. I'm going to grab this, drag it in here, then come over here and drag it into our timeline. So. I have to crop this down real quick. If that is the case for you as well, I recommend cropping this down to about you know five to 10 seconds. That's where After Effects rotoscoping uh, and these effects in particular work the best. And overall, just After Effects. So now that everything is you know cropped in and we have our area that we want to edit, it's a roughly about like 10 seconds-ish. Now, what we're first gonna wanna do is come over here and duplicate this. So you use Command D and that's the command to duplicate a layer. Now we have two layers of this. We're gonna to go to our top layer over here. My bad, let me close this. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna double click this top layer. This top layer is gonna open up a new layer over here on the top and you're gonna see it's gonna say layer. So you're gonna have the composition right aside and then you're gonna have layer over here. So now what we're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna grab this rotoscope icon over here it's in the top and we're going to highlight our, our little fellow over here. So I like the subject. You can scroll on your mouse to zoom in areas that you want to you know, get more detail and zoom out. And if it doesn't catch on to any areas, then you can just go ahead and you know draw over them and make sure those are got uh, selected as well. But it's doing pretty good job uh, in terms of selecting. Next, what we want to do is just drag our cursor along the timeline and it will continue, After Effects will start tracking and selecting the areas it thinks that you want. So if it misses anywhere, like these two fingers, you can go ahead and select those. Like I said, our rotoscope over here is not that, uh, especially for this type of effect, there's gonna be a lot of motion blur, so you're not gonna really have to worry about getting everything down to the precise exact detail, but you know, just making sure that you have in enough of the subject selected. So we're gonna go ahead through this timeline. I'll speed this clip up. Clip up. All right, perfect. So now that once you have everything rotoscope of your subject, once you get to the very end, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna hit this freeze button. Now this freeze button is going to freeze and lock in all of your rotoscope frames. So yeah, once you're made sure that you're certain of everything is perfectly selected, then you're gonna go ahead and hit that and it will take a couple minutes. So we'll speed this up as well. Perfect. So now once everything is frozen, you'll get this purple tab and it says everything is frozen. And as you see, uh, if you look in, there's this uh, green like arrow over the rotor brush. And that means you can no longer select stuff because everything is already selected and locked in. So what freezing basically does, it just makes it easier so that just in case whatsoever, you make some like edit on the rotoscope timeline way before, things won't mess up the entire rotoscope and you'll lose all your, your information in your work. So it's just a good way, a good safety measure to implement. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna come up here back to our composition, we're gonna click on that. And if you come down here, because if you rotoscope the top layer and you turn off the visibility for the bottom layer, you will see your selected subject. And you can see our subject is dancing and just, you know, like separate, completely separate from these other layers. And now over here, as you can see, there's kind of a little bit of like white edge lining around the subject. So in order to get rid of that, there are two things you can do. You can increase the feather. That's what I first do over here on the effects control panel, by the way. And then what you're going to do over here is you're going to shift edge. And so shifting edge, increasing that, that obviously makes the edge bigger. And if you decrease it, it makes the edge smaller. So as you can see, that got rid of a lot of the white edge lining. There's still some like crevices over there, but it's so insignificant stuff. It won't matter after everything is uh, done and edited. Okay, 
So now that we have our figure separated from that and rotoscoped entirely from the bottom layer, we are gonna to wanna to come over here to the effects and presets value and we're gonna type in offset. Now we're gonna take this offset effect and we're gonna drag this down to the bottom layer. And now what this is gonna do, you'll see this, uh, see how it plays out. We're going to grab the shift to center value and you're gonna grab the right, you can grab the right or the left one, either way you prefer it. The left one controls the horizontal movement and then the right controls the vertical. So either way you want the video to slide behind your subject, uh, you can choose the anchor coordinates. And um, I'm gonna go with the left one right now for the sake for vertical effect. Um, what you're first gonna wanna do, just make sure everything is reset by the way. Command Z, Command Z. I'm going to click the stopwatch time icon. And keep note, I am in the middle of my video right now. ish. So I'm gonna let this video play and then I have, a, I have a time icon right here. So this is basically keyframing this shift to center effect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move like a couple frames down about like four or three seconds. Then I'm going to drag this all the way to the right. And as you can see, I'm increasing the value and it's kind of moving the frames like all the way over to the right. So a good value, I would type this in, but I kind of like to see like how much I'm moving it. It's about like, it's about like 8,000 ish. So I'm gonna move it over here. And key that you wanna do this is make sure that your last keyframe lines up, this offset value lines up exactly with your sub, with the frame that is at hand. So once everything plays out, it's gonna move really fast like this. Your subject is still in frame at the end. So now we have the base of this effect and you can see it's very rough and rigid, but we're gonna ease things in. So what you're first gonna wanna do, make sure the movement is also good as well. Not something that just like hurts your eyes or anything, move too fast or too slow. I think this is a good speed, but as you can see, there's this very linear like like movement with it and it's like it, it just stops roughly what you want to do is you want to highlight both oops my bad highlight both of these keyframes over here right click them and then you're going to go over here to yeah right click them and then it's going to say keyframe assistant and you're going to go over here to easy ease and then that's going to make it so that they ease in better but for better control so it kind of eases in a little bit better uh, it's still rough to me. A uh, tip trick that you can use is go over here to this graph editor. This will turn your timeline into a graph and although it looks very complicated at first, it's very simple. You're gonna have these color coordinated values to these graphs. So as you can see, this purple this is the purple graph right here. And this represents the keyframe speed velocity. So as you can see, it starts off moving fast, moving fast, and then this is where it moves the fastest as this probably hits the top and then it decreases. So we're gonna have these anchor um, handles at the bottom and you can basically take these and drag these. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag them towards the center just a little bit. And by the way, also you can adjust the keyframes from here as well too. So if you wanna move it so it's like, uh, moves a little bit over a longer period of time, you can adjust your keyframes as well. It's pretty cool. And then I created that, that like, I, as you drag these anchor points together and it makes the parabola pointy. As you can see, the speed increases towards the middle and then it decreases at the end. I'm gonna drag this out just a little bit just cause we're here. So I have my effect over a longer period of time. And then we got this kind of cool looking uh, zoom. I'm gonna, you can also, you know, just play with it. Whatever works best for your vid video footage. It's very simple for this one. And I think it works perfectly just for a quick like slide and then there we go so now that you have your graph edited and your velocity keyframes time mapped you can go ahead and close this graph editor by just clicking the icon and then what we're going to want to do is get into the real you know final finishing touches of the effect so we're going to go back to our effects and presets we're going to type in directional blur take this directional blur drag it to the bottom and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to come over here to the effects you can you know, drop down arrow, close this offset, and now click on your directional blur. So take this as the very keyframe that you started your offset, and then we're gonna keyframe our blur length. Not the direction, but our blur length. So what you're first gonna see 
is when we when we do this effect, we're gonna move like about exactly to the middle where the the speed velocity is moving the fastest, and then we're gonna increase our blur length all the way up to like 90 for say. And you can see this blur length is moving up and down. That's where the direction comes into play. So we're moving left and right, so we're gonna just change this direction to like 90 degrees. And now you can see the blur is moving with the vertical slide. So it looks like a lot more realistic. But then lastly, you also have to keyframe the last part as well. So I'm just gonna Command C, copy that, and then paste that last uh, zero directional blur at the end. Or you can just change the, or you can just come over here and change this blurring length to zero again. Same thing. And then you can see it gets blurry towards the middle as the speed increases and then unblurs itself. So there you go. We have a basic effect. Uh, I just like to do some last finishing touches that I think makes add this effect a little bit, you know, pop more. I go over here to back to presets. I'm going to take the glow effect. I'm going to drag this also down to the bottom. As you can see, it's going to start making things a little bit boofed, but we're going to come over here to the effects controls. We're going to be keyframing everything again. So come over here, make sure the glow intensity is keyframed. And we're going to set this at zero at the same, you know, starting length of everything that's going on over here. So the key, the velocity, the motion blur, and we're going to come over here to the middle. This is the middle where everything is pretty much happening. We're going to increase this this glow intensity. So as you can see, everything's kind of starting to glow now, but it still kind of looks really ugly and harsh. You're gonna come over here to the glow radius and then you can increase this glow radius and it starts to make things look a little bit more like glowy and, and, um, and yeah, fancy. And then this threshold over here just uh, affects like what is glowing, how much of the scene is gonna glow and how much is not. So I'm just gonna move that about 56% and then radius is 132 and then our intensity is 1.7. So those are pretty good values to me. And then once we have it back at the end, we're just gonna wanna drop this intensity back to zero and that will make everything go away. And because that is also keyframed, you can see right here, we have our keyframes for our glow intensity. You can take this drop down arrow if you wanna change everything. And then once we play it through, we have our effect kind of like turn on glow up a bit and then and then it like glows out so i mean it's just a preference thing it's just something i like to do with this and it just makes it feel a lot more like <laughs> glowy and then also one last thing sorry i just keep doing this it's a really fun effect you can really play with this and just have fun with this and you know just uh, mess around with it i grab a uh, VHS like noise overlay and I, it's just something that like, finalizes the thing just wraps it all together I drag in a noise overlay effect that I have just downloaded off of YouTube I'll link a video below that you can just download the overlay it's about like six seconds I'm gonna drag this in between our rotoscope and our um, our bottom layer and then if your clip is too long hold up. if your clip is too long you can come over here to the end uh, make sure you're selecting layer, hit Command Shift D, that splits the layer, and then you can delete the rest part that you don't want. So now we're gonna have this like black overlay. Um, it's in the back, it kind of just ruined everything, but you can come over here to the blend mode, change this to add, and then we have this like VHS effect as it, as it goes. So we're gonna start it, we're gonna take this, trim it down to where it starts, and then trim it down right to where it ends as well. You could mess with the uh, opacity so that it fades in, fades out. It depends on how much uh, of the overlay there is, but this one, I've tried it before and it just doesn't really make that much of a difference. So we're just gonna have it like, you know, cut in, cut out. And there we have it. We have this final effect where our character moves and then there's the background that just kind of like fades through and then we have a glow and then some VHS lines and it just a really cool uh, music video effect that you guys can just you know mess around with. Like I said, um, I was adding glow, VHS effects, just have fun with it. Just play around, have fun, and I'm pretty sure you guys can make something cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope at the end of this, you guys can walk away with an effect that you can go use in your future music videos or projects whatsoever. Please make sure you like the video and subscribe to 11% for more tutorials and music videos. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.